morning, welcome. Chapter 4, verse 23 in Beratius. We're learning the story of the death of Cain by the hands of his great-great-grandson, sixth generation, Lemech. God promised Cain that he would survive for seven generations and then the murder of Hevel would be avenged. And today, between the lines, as Rashi explains, we learn about this story. To give a little bit of an introduction, we learned yesterday that Lemech had a son by the name of Tuval Kayan. And uh, <clears throat> Lemech's son, or, or children, completed the seven generations from Kayan. Lemech, as he got older, went blind. He was legally blind. And he went out with his son, Tuval Kayan, hunting. Tuval Kayan pointed at what he thought was an animal, a deer, and he said, shoot. And so he pulled the bow and shot the arrow. And little did he know that it wasn't a deer, but it was his great-great-grandfather, Lemech. So he killed him. It was his great-great-grandfather, Cain, rather. It was Lemech's great-great-grandfather, Cain. So Lemech killed Cain. So Tubal Cain, his son, said to him, I'm really sorry, it wasn't a deer, it was great-great-granddaddy. He was so frustrated that he clapped his hands together, but being blind, he didn't realize that his son, Tubal Cain, was right in between his powerful hands as they came together, and he killed him too. So that's a double manslaughter. So now we learned that Lemech had two wives. So his wife said to Lemech, you're sleeping on the couch. Because, uh, quite frankly, we don't feel safe next to you. <laughs> you have too many uh, accidents. Or they were disgusted, or the various interpretations. So now we learn, 23, by Yomer Lemech, Lenosh of Lemech said to his wives, Oda v'tzilo, he said it poetically, Oda and Silo, Shman Kaili, hearken, listen to my voice, Neshe Lemech, O wives of Lemech, Hazeno Imrasi, hearken, listen to my speech. I'm pleading with you, because the man that I killed, as Rashi explains, was not an intentional murder. The young boy that I killed was not an intentional murder. It was an accident. So therefore, don't hold these accidental deaths against me. Rashi now gives us this behind-the-scenes story. Rashi 23, Shaman Keli, Shehoya Pershes Mimenu Betashmish, because his wives separated themselves from him and refused to engage in intimacy with him. Lafisha Horagas Kayin, we asked Tuval Kayin Benoit. Why? Because he killed his great great grandfather Kayin, and he also killed his son Tuval Kayin. What's the story? Shehoya Lemech Suma. Lemech was blind. The Tuval Kayin and Tuval Kayin, his son Meishchei, would lead him. The Roes Kayin and he, Tuval Kayin, saw Kayin in the distance. Vinid Melekechaya and Kayin appeared to him like a hunting animal. The Omar Laoviv, so he said to his father, Limshech Bakeshes, he said, Pull! And he drew the bow and he let the arrow go, Vaharogay, and he killed him. A great tragedy. Once he realized that that which he killed, which he thought would be a deer or an animal, turned out to be his great-grandfather, Kayin. He was so forlorn and so frustrated. He struck one hand against the other in remorse, in regret. And inadvertently crushed or struck his son and killed him too. So there was a double accident. 
So his wives separated from him. And he was appeasing them. That's what this poetic verse is about. Shman li shomali latashmish to agree to be intimate with me, arguing that vechiish asher harakti lefitzi hunerag was the man that I killed, killed by my wounding him, intentionally, vechiani ptsati vmezi that I intentionally strike him, sheyapetsa kori alshmi that I should be held account held accountable was an accident. And the young man whom I killed, was he killed by my intentional blow? An account of my intentional blow? Bit me a question mark. I am certainly a manslayer. I'm an inadvertent killer. And not intentional. This is not my intentional wound. This is not my intentional blow. So why are you holding this terrible accident against me? Petza makas chetz. Petza is the result of a blow by sword or an arrow. Makumba in old French. So Cain goes on to argue. I'm sorry. Lemech goes on to argue. Ki shivasayim yukom koyin if Cain, my great 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 grandfather, who intentionally killed Abel. Because Cain killed Abel, Cain killed Abel. If he was given seven generations until his murder was avenged, shivim b'shiva. In that case, I, Lemech, should be given not seven generations, but 77 generations. And that's just a number that he grasped upon. Because if Cain was given an abatement of seven generations, before God would avenge the murder of Abel, then I, who am not a murderer, but it was an accident, I should be given 77. And you, my dear wives, are punishing me right now by isolating yourselves from me. Rashi, ki shivasayim, yukom koyin, kayin shehorag mezid, Cain, who killed intentionally, nit his punishment was suspended, at shiva datas for seven generations. Ani, I, he argued, Sheharakti Shegig, who killed inadvertently, because I didn't mean to kill Kayan. I didn't mean to kill Tuval Kayan. Like Koshkin, how much more so? She told Elishvias Harbe, I should be given many sets of seven. Shivim Veshiva, says Rashi, Lashinri Bushvias, says Rashi, it doesn't mean 77, it means many sevens. Ochasle, he just grabbed that number. Kach Dorash Rabbi Tanchuma. That's the Medrash Tanchuma. So the approach of Medrash Tanchuma is that this whole conversation is about the story with Lemech killing Cain and Tuval Cain. But the Medrash Breshis Rabba, there's another Medrash called the Medrash Rabba who has another approach explaining this verse where the Medrash Rabba says, Lehorag Lemech Klum, that Lemech didn't kill anybody. You want to figure out how Cain got uh, killed? You'll figure it out, but it's got nothing to do with Lemech, says the Bracious Rabba. Why are his wives separating from him in that case? Once they had fulfilled the commandment of having children, because they each had children. Because a decree had been issued that all of the descendants of Cain be consumed after seven generations, Omru, they said, Ma onu you expect us to have more children? In vain? Our children are going to be destroyed in the floodwaters. Lemochar, in the future, Hamabulba, the flood will come. The Shaitif is Hakel and will drown everything. So therefore, I'm not, we're not having any more children. In fact, we learned yesterday that Lemech's daughter was Nama, who was Noach's wife. So the, the, everyone else was to be descendant from Chase, which we're going to learn about shortly. So his wives rightfully said, anyone who will be born at this point in time from us will die. And he says to them, 
Have I slain a man intentionally? Did I kill Hebel? Shayaish became of a yellow Bishonim. He was a man in height, but a child in years, meaning that Hebel was a full grown man, but he was a baby because Hebel was just born at that point in time. Shehizari called a and that my children should be consumed because of that sin. Oma Kayin Shahara Gif Kayin who killed. Nitnale, his punishment was suspended for Shiva Deiris for seven generations. Ani, I, Shaloi Harakti, I didn't kill anybody. Le Koshkin, certainly, she had totally Shviyas Harbe, I should be given many sevens. So, your argument that we shouldn't be having children anymore, he says, is not a good argument. Rashi goes on to add that according to the Bereshis Rabbo, Vizel Kalbachemer Shoshtus, this is a foolish argument. Because if God wants to destroy the seventh uh, Kayan and his descendants after seven generations, and that's the pledge he makes, and you say it doesn't work, Hashem will never be able to, so to speak, collect his debt, and fulfill his word. So therefore, this whole logical argument doesn't work. That's only according to the Bracious Rabba, but according to the Medrash Rabbi Tanchuma, the whole argument and the whole presentation of Lemech has to do with killing Kayin and Tuval Kayin. So that's the end of the story. We now move on. We talked about this yesterday. That Vayeda Odom Eid Es Ishtay. That once again Odom knew his wife, was intimate with his wife Chava. As Rashi will explain, for 130 years they separated because of the tragedy of Cain and Abel. 130 years later, they once again established their relationship. So they were intimate. Vatei led Bain, and she bore a son after 130 years. Vatikra Eshmei, and she named him Shes. In English, it's Seth. Kishos li elakim, the word Shes means designated, appointed, given, because God has given me Zera Acher, other children, another son, Tachas Hevel, in the place of Hevel, Ki Harogai Kayin, because Hevel was killed by Kayin, and now I've had, I have another son. And I look at this, good morning, as a great consolation and comfort. Rashi brings down from the Bracious Rabbo that Lemech came to Adam. The Kabbal al Nashiv and complained about his wives. Omar Lahem, Adam said, Is it your business to concern yourself about God's decree? You have to have children. Atem, you, Asum Mitzvashem, you do your commandment. And God will do what he has to do. Amrulay, so the wife said to him, Kshait Atzmachot Chila. In that case, you should first correct yourself. You're the one that separated from your own wives. 130 years, once because of your sin of the Garden of Eden, of the Tree of Knowledge. Death was decreed because of you. Why aren't you having children? So Adam said, you know what, you're right. Miyad vayeda odom. Mahu eid, lelamedcha, to teach you. That his, his affection and his desire for her increased even more than before, so more generations could be brought into the world, says the Medrash Rabbah. So now we're beginning to enumerate the generations which brought forth civilization. And we know that there are ten generations from Odom to Noach. It's a Mishnah in Pirkei Ovas. Asoro deires me Odom vad Noach. Odom, Sheis, Enosh, Kenon, Mahalalel, Yered, Chanoch. Chanoch is the seventh, as we will learn. Misushelech, Lemech, not the same Lemech as the other Lemech, and Noach. Ole Sheis, Gamhu, Yulad, Bain. Sheis also had a son. Vayikra, Shmei, Enosh. Enosh is the third generation. Enosh was the father of pagan idol worship, as the Rambam says. The Rambam in the laws of idol worship says, in the days of Enosh, 
it became acceptable to name everything God. Oz, Huchal, then it became every day, it became profane. Then people began, Likre B'Shem Hashem, to call everything and everybody God. 26, Oz, Huchal, Loshen Chulen, profane. Likre says, Odom, to call the names of man. In the names of idols, in the name of God, to make them idols, and to refer to them as God. So this is the days of Enosh, and as we will learn, that because of this, during the days of Enosh, a tsunami came and consumed a third of the population as a punishment for the massive idolatry which went on, and the other sins which were being perpetrated during that time, as we will learn. L'chaim, l'chaim. Now we enter into chapter 5, verse 1, where he goes through the generations. Ze Sefer, this is the account Told us Adam of the generations of Adam, beginning from the day Adam that God created man, bidmus elakim also isa in the likeness of God He created man. Rashi ze sefer told us Adam zui spiras told us Adam. This is the story of the generations of Adam. Omedishe agoda yashrabim. There are many medrashim. B'yayim b'ray, Magid, what does this teach us? Shem b'yayim shenivra ha'ilid, that on the day that he was created, Adam begot children, and this goes back to what we said earlier, that Cain and Abel were born immediately after creation, and the pregnancy was instant, and they were born instantly, and they were born as adults, with all of the interpretation of the Medrash pre-expulsion of the Garden of Eden. He goes on to specify verse 2, Zohar on as we learned earlier, he created them male, female, by Yevodachesem, and he blessed them, by Yikra Shmom Odom, and he called their name Odom, meaning Adam and Eve were referred to as Odom, Biyem Hibodom, when he created them, because they were created as one body, a combined creation of male, female. He then, as we learned earlier, separated them. So when he created them, Male, female, they were both called Odom before the separation. Now he goes on to enumerate the generations. We know that although because of Adam's sin, it was decreed that he not live forever, nevertheless people lived up to a thousand years. As it says that Ki elef shonim be'enecha ki yom esmal. It says in Tehillim that we say, King David says to Hashem, a thousand years in your eyes is like yesterday's day. So that God said to Adam, because on the day that you will eat from this fruit of the tree of knowledge you will die, he meant within the millennium, within the thousand years. There's a beautiful medrash that Adam was supposed to live a thousand years. We're about to learn that he didn't. He lived 930 years because God showed Adam all the future generations and all the lofty souls. And when he saw the soul of King David and its tremendous potential, he saw that King David was destined to be born a stillborn and have no life. So he said, God, what's with this? I see tremendous potential, but no actualization. So Hashem says, it is what it is. So uh, Adam said, if I speak to my accountant and get his approval, can I give him some years? God says, sure, with pleasure. So Adam gave him 70 years, and King David lived for 70 years, and Adam lived for 930 years. So this is the idea of a thousand years is a day that was the maximum lifespan of any of the people here. They all lived very long. This went on until approximately after the flood. Back to the text here. Verse 3. By Yechi Adam and Adam lived, Shleishim and Mashona, 
130 years by Yelid bin Musa Kitsalme, and he gave, he, he begot, he brought forth children in his own likeness, in his own image. By Yikra Shmei, this child was named Shase, and here we're only concerned with a particular child leading up to the next generation. By you, you may Adam Achri Alide Shase, Shmei Nemei Ashana, he lived another. 800 years after Shays, because Shays was born when he was 130, and he lived till 930. By Yelid Bonu Babonis, he had many other children, but that doesn't interest us. By Yehu Kol Yimei Odom, Asher Chai, Chamei Ashona, Shlei Shimshona, the total lifespan of Adam was 930 years, by Yomais, and then he died. Three, Shlei Shimma Ashona, as the Medrash said earlier, Ad Khan, Parash Mino Isha, that was the time that Adam and Eve had separated 130 years. Now we come to the next generation, verse 6. Vayechi Shes, and Shes lived Chamesh Shonu Mas Shonu, 105 years, Vayelid Es Enosh, and then he fathered the third generation, Enosh. Vayechi Shes, Achri Elide Es Enos, and Shes lived after he fathered Enosh. Sheva Shonu Mushmeinu Me Es Shonu, another 807 years. Vayelid Bonu Mabonis, he had many sons and daughters. By you call you Meshes, and his entire lifespan was Shteim Esrei Shono Chame Shona nine hundred and twelve years. By Yomes, and he died. By Yechi Enosh, and Enosh lived Tishim Shona ninety years. By Yelid, and he fathered as Kenon. By Yechi Enosh, Achad as Kenon. Chamesh Esrei Shono Shmeinu Me Shona. He lived another eight hundred and fifteen years. By Yelid, Ben Avonis had many other sons and daughters. By he call you Enosh, Chamesh Shona was Shame Shona. The entire lifespan of Enosh. Was 905 years by Yomas and he died. By Yechi Kainan, Shivim Shona Kainan lived 70 years. By Yelid and he fathered Mahalalel, as Mahalalel, Yechi Kainan, Achay Elidus Amal, and he lived after Mahalalel. Our boy Im Shona, Shmeinu Me'a Shona, 840 years. By Yelid, Bonu Babonis had many other sons and daughters. By Yehu Kol Yimei Kainan, his entire lifespan was Esra Shona, was Shamei Shona, 910. By Yomas and he died. By Yechi Mahalalel, Chomish, by Yechi Mahalalel, Chomish Shonim, Vishishim Shona. And Mahalala lived 65 years. Vayelid es Yorad, and he fathered Yorad. Vayechi Mahalala achri Yelid es Yorad. And after that, he lived Shleishim Shonu Shmeinu Me'a Shona, 830 years. Vayelid Bonu Babonis. Vayu Kol Yimei Mahalala. His entire lifespan was Chamesh Vesishim Shonu Shmeinu Me'a Shona, 895 years. Vayomas, and he died. Vayechi Yerad Shtayim Vesishim Shona. Vama Shona Yerad lived 162 years. Vayelid es Chanoich, and he begot Chanoich. Chanoich is a very famous man, otherwise known as Enoch. Vayechi Yered, and Yered lived. Achri Elides Chanoich, Shmeinu Me'a Shona, 800 years. Vayeled Bonu Mabonis. Vayu Koli Me'yered, Shtayim Meshishim Shona, Shami Shona. And he lived a total of 962 years. Vayomas, and he died. And here we read that the pattern changes. 21... By Yechi Chanoich Chamesh Meshishim Shona, Chanoich lived 65 years by Yelid as Misushalach, and he fathered his son Misushalach, Methuselah, who lived the longest of any recorded lifespan. But Chanoich himself died very young, relatively speaking. By Yishalach Chanoich Es Olakim, Chanoich walked along with God. He was a great tzaddik, a great soul. After he fathered Mr. Shalach, he lived a God-fearing life for another 300 years, and had other sons and daughters. Rashi 22, Chanoch was a great tzaddik, certainly in comparison to all the other people around that time. But, the he was not that strong, and there was concern that he would go bad. The Fiko, therefore, me and our Kaddish Baruch God hastened. The Silkayan took him, Ben Misayan killed him, paid him his money before his time, so that he could be taken as a tzaddik. This is what the Torah differentiates with his death, Lichtev to write, as we learn soon. Ve'enenu, suddenly one day he was gone. It doesn't say he died. Einenu ba'ilam, one day he was gone. He ascended up, l'malish ne'isav, to complete his years. There's a balaturim here. The balaturim says, on 18, 
הנה בשמיים עדי בגמטרי חנוך ושהדי בגמטרי מטטרון. That Hashem took one person from before the flood, and this was Hanoch, and one person after the flood, and this was Pinchas, and took them up to heaven alive, so that they should testify to Hashem's righteousness. Why did Hashem pick Hanoch? Because Hanoch was the seventh generation following Odom. Odom, Sheis, Enosh, Kenam, Alal, Yeret, Hanoch. And Kol, Hashvi, and Chavivin. All sevens are special. So Hanoch was this great tzaddik. The Medrashim tell us and the Kabbalah tells us of the greatness of Hanoch, who was the seventh generation. We also find that Moshe was the seventh generation from Abraham. As it says, Umoshe Olo El Ho'olakim. Moshe also ascended to God. So this is the uniqueness of the special soul of Hanoch. There's a lot more said about Hanoch in the Medrashim. Verse 23, Vayihi kol yemei Hanoch, and all the days of Hanoch were, chamesh v'shishim shonu, shleish meas shonu, he lived a measly 365 years. Vayisala chanoch es olakim, and Hanoch walked with God. As the Medrashim say, he didn't walk ahead of God, he leaned on God. Ve'einenu, and one day, he was gone. Ki lokach eisei because God took him before he would begin to sin. Rashi, ki lokach eisei lepnei zmani, before his time. Ki mei hinani lekeach mimcha es machmad einecha, as it says in the verse in Ezekiel, end of today's Chumash portion.